Howdy, y'all. Joe Hills here, recording as I was doing in Nashville, Tennessee. I'm on the Hermitcraft server today, and I've been thinking about where would I put a creepy townhouse if I needed to build a creepy townhouse. Now, I don't need to technically build a creepy townhouse, but before you do something at scale, like build a giant castle based on a D&D &D map, you should probably try something simpler at a smaller scale, like building a townhouse from a D&D &D map. That way, you'll learn about the problems that you're going to have adapting from one thing to another. Like, I've already realized that the house in the map I was looking at, like, D&D &D uses, like, grid squares, and so the house is, like, 55 feet long, because it's, like, 11 5-foot grid squares long in D&D. &D. So I was like, okay, well, I'll just do it in, uh, you know, in meters, and I'll make every block a meter. Well, the walls in D&D &D in this particular map are basically infinitely thin. So if you imagine that the grid lines just have darker lines where the walls are on the map, you're going to see that problem. Because in Minecraft, you have a, what do you call those? Blocks. They're not infinitely thin. You can't do it. So anyway, I'm thinking I want the townhouse to be nestled because it's going to make it feel cozier and it's going to explain why there's no windows on either side of it. So if I'm going to nestle this somewhere, I want it to be facing the bay. Dang it, hop up higher. I want it to be, the front of the house should be facing into the bay. The sides of the house, I want to have alongside natural walls if I can get them as much as possible because there's no windows on the sides of the house, at least as designed. I'm going to probably take some creative liberty, but I don't want to go you know, too nuts with it. So I'm kind of thinking the obvious thing to do is to build it into this valley here. Just dig it backwards into this hill. Now the back of the house does technically have windows on it, so that might be a little weird. But I think on the whole, it should be okay. Now one thing I am a little worried about though, is if I do decide that this townhouse works really well and I want to build my castle Ravenloft, that might stretch all the way from there out to here. I might be building Death House adjacent to the walls of Castle Ravenloft, which is not necessarily ideal from a story standpoint um and it's gonna look weird i have been thinking though if i was gonna scale down castle ravenloft it's also built with like a grid with five and ten foot squares so maybe doing a two-fifths or three-fifths ratio would be the way to do it so instead of this being you know 30 blocks tall it would be two-fifths of that which okay let's do some cross you can divide out things like you know you cancel the uh the fives or whatever so that would be like 12 blocks tall or you know 18 blocks tall which an 18 block tall wall that's only two or three blocks thick is a lot more reasonable than a 30 block tall wall that's about seven blocks thick in terms of just being able to get the thing done but i figure i'll learn a lot building death house at scale that will help me decide what scale to build Ravenloft at, if I decide to do it. Now, for those of you guys who missed the earlier episode where I talked about it, uh, Chris Perkins came up with Death House, and Tracy and Laura Hickman came up with Ravenloft. These are not my original ideas. These are pretty famous D&D &D ideas that other people did really well that I'm trying to adapt so I can try to run some of the other hermits through a D&D &D game in Minecraft. This is going to... Basically, I'm. if you imagine... You know how sometimes people will do... Like, if you watch one of my old Pitfalls and Penguins uh, videos, I actually set up, I was, like, live streaming to Good and Aurelian and maybe pause. Maybe not pause that time. But we had, uh, basically, I had Adobe Illustrator open, and I was live streaming it or stre screen sharing it to them, and I was drawing on the map in Adobe Illustrator as I went so they could see, like, oh, hey, where's their stuff going on, that sort of stuff. But what we would do here is instead we'd have, like, a virtual map that all the players would walk through, and we'd still have character sheets and dice and what have you, but we would play the game, and I would run it as the dungeon master, and we'd see what happened. Could be interesting. Where was I? I need proportions. Now, the real death house, 55 feet deep. Uh, wait, is that right? Yep. The real death house is 55 feet deep and 30 feet wide, roughly. So I needed to adapt that to blocks, and I needed to add a little bit of a buffer because blocks in Minecraft are a meter thick, so walls in Minecraft are a meter thick. But what I wanted to do is basically add some padding. So this is going to be 14 blocks wide, 
and 30 blocks deep. So here's how we're going to do that. We're going to set 14 blocks right here. Whoops. Boom. 14 blocks and 30 blocks. Just to kind of get a sense of how wide and deep that is. And we want to be as close to this cliff as possible because this is a three-story house. This is pretty big. So even if I'm chewing through this pick, uh, or not pick, um, this cliff with shovels for a little bit, that's not going to be terrible. Plus part of it's hollow, so that saved me some diamonds, I guess. So let's go ahead and start at about here. Let's just kind of assume that this is one of our corners here. Actually, we'll start here. That seems nice. Dang it. Oh, that's throwing off my count. Man, you can't mess up the count. They'll beat you. So here we go. That is 14 blocks wide. So this is a pretty wide house. This is about as wide as my greenhouse I built on the platform over there which you can't really see from here. And I kind of like the idea that you have stuff you can only see glimpses of from different parts of the bay. I don't want to have everything like lined up next to each other. I want people to come through here and be excited as they go through. So if this is one corner, we're going to mark that with a torch. I'm going to come grab this. Now I know mobs will spawn here, but whatever. I'm going to mark this corner with a torch. Now, if we need to go 24 blocks back. Well, we've already got one, so we really only need 23 blocks in our inventory. And, uh, I'm not going to mine through that right now. We're just going to go one at a time. Just to get a sense of how far back this is. 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and finally 1. So here is the back corner of the house which is not as far back as maybe I was worried about. It, it goes back a ways, but it's not unreasonable. It's going to be, it's going to have a nice lava pit over here. If we need lava, it's going to be right up against this cliff. If we need it to be against a cliff, which we actually do, that's, that's really handy. I don't want to build two abandoned houses next to it like in the real campaign. But yeah, this'll, this'll, this'll be nice, I think. I'm going to have to lay out the floor plan and clear this out. So I guess what I'm going to start doing is actually emptying all the stuff inside of here. Ooh, I hear a zombie. Where is he? He's probably down in that cave, yeah. So I need to start clearing all of the terrain and everything here out so that I can claim this land for myself, which is really claiming it for the troubled dead who reside in the Death House. I don't want to go too much into the story of Death House right now because... I want that to be exciting for you when I actually run it for the other hermits. But we're going to see how it goes. I'm probably also going to significantly alter it from the original adventure. Partially because I don't want to just blatantly steal from... Which, I mean, I bought the game. but And I bought it to run for people. I own the book. But, like, I want to... Um, Put my own spin on it, you know? Like, really, you could watch anybody play Dungeons & Dragons with a bunch of hermits from a book. You want to see me do it because you know I'm going to change things up a little bit. I haven't figured out exactly how much I'm going to change things up, but I definitely want to keep things well clear of any immediate copyright concerns. So, that's important. If I'm going to steal from anybody, it probably shouldn't be Chris Perkins. You know, he's in charge of a lot of things, like dungeons. Additionally, dragons. Well, so now that we've started digging into here, so our townhouse will be nestled by cliffs on either side, I've started working on the rough floor plan. As you can see, there's a little covered porch right here that leads into the primary foyer. We're going to have actual decorations for right now. We're just trying to get the floor plan in place. A living room entrance will be right here. Maybe it's kind of a game room. I don't know, but game room, living room entrance here. I have a little closet right there, and we will have this wall continue, I guess, yeah, back to here-ish. So i got to kind of keep in mind how all this is going to work as I go, which is a little weird. Oh, this wall is actually there. So I'm looking at this grid that's on five-foot squares and adapting it dynamically to three foot squares which is not as easy as you'd think because three and five are both prime numbers so that gets pretty inconvenient like a lot 
but okay. Anyway, so the dining room entrance is supposed to be kind of across here from the door entrance there. So, whoops. So we'll put our dining room entrance here, and then we'll have a, uh, a wall here. Here we go. And there's going to be something in here. You'll find out later. I'm going to make another door real quick. I'm going to make a lot more doors. More door! Let's simply walk. Okay. So these are not the permanent doors. These are just example doors so that we can get this kind of rolling. Like so. So then there's a little alcove here that has a door facing into the dining room along this wall. Actually might need to face from this side so it can close along that wall. Yeah. And then we would also have a door. Dang it, torches. It's not your time. We'd also have a door facing in from over here. That is going to lead to the kitchen. Okay. So, in general, we have a broad idea of the rough proportions of some of the rooms in the first floor. And that's kind of okay. That's a good start. But I really need to dig out the rest of this and figure out how tall I need to have each floor be even so that I can get the level of detail that I desire. I know each floor has to be at least probably three blocks high, but it might be better to do four blocks high. And I don't want to do anything fancy with slabs. I want to do full single block floors so that way I can really get a sense of it. So. Transition animation complete! Whoa, we're here in the end with all of our friends that we have smacked with swords because the hordes of stones that must have been destroyed, must have been smacked, must have been pickaxed. I don't know what, my, they're like chewing through my axes and I gotta come back here and get some new ones enchanted. So, unbreaking three and efficiency four. Okay, I'll take it. Now, unfortunately, there's no iron anvil over here, so, and I didn't have enough anvil iron components in here to carry forward. So we're just going to enchant a few things that we wanted to enchant, and then we'll take our, I'm breaking three, can I get some, uh, blast protection? I was hoping for feather falling. Oh well, that's fine. What I figured I'd do was come over here and enchant those two things from scratch. Actually, I wanted to enchant this shovel from scratch, too. So, real quickly. Hey, Enderman, do you have any uh, magical orbs inside of your bodies that I could slice open, extract, and then use to make my tools slightly more efficient? Just marginal improvements is really all I need. Thank you. Diamond shovel, that's not the one. Here we go. Diamond shovel. Fortune 2. Well, that'll maybe never help. Whatever. It's fine. So, goodbye, extra lapis lazuli. We have gotten everything we need from here. We can use these 27 levels at the anvil back home. So we're going to head there now. As you can see, we have returned to our death house dig site. I've got this anvil here now, so I'm going to go ahead and take my new pick and combine it with one of these existing efficiency 4 ones in order to get a little bit more out of it. So, efficiency 4 and fortune 2. Now I've got fortune 2, unbreaking 3, efficiency 5. And it only cost me 13. That seems like a pretty good deal. So, I can also combine maybe one of these or one of these at some point. How's these guys doing? Oh, I need 21 levels for that. We'll come back to that. 14 for this one. Yeah, we'll do that too. So we're already up. Our picks are way more powerful than they were, and we can wipe out the rest of this uh, kind of part of the floor plan here. It's not really a, a floor plan yet. As you can see, I've started laying out some of the rooms, but so much more to do. To doom everyone. So much more to see. To see everyone terrified. This is a very Disney song, which I didn't intend all along, but I find I am the architect of the destruction. Oh, wait, no, I'm using somebody else's plans. I'm like the unlicensed contractor of destruction. And I'm building things that will kill women and men. Boom, boom. It's a pretty terrifying house. At least it will be when it's constructed. It's a pretty mystifying house. 
At least it is when the game's deconstructed by experts to try and to determine how what it can do to teach people Dungeons and Dragons fundamentals to. I don't really write these songs in advance and I think that it shows. But anyway, let's just queue through the rest of this and get on with the show. So as you can see, I've figured out from the stairs that I roughly need to go at least this high for the next floor. So we haven't exactly worked out what that floor is going to look like, but for right now, let's just kind of put some wood in here to indicate second story up here. So in terms of just getting a sense of the space and the proportions, I feel like I'm pretty happy with it. If I'm going to do some terracotta as wallpaper down the line, I'm going to have some of these rooms, are going to, they're going to feel a little bit smaller in the long term. We might have to double up on the walls if we have mismatched uh, kind of... Uh, what do you call it? Not wrapping paper, wallpaper between the two rooms. But I feel like we can play with it. It's it's going to work. So, feeling pretty confident. I figure now I should go ahead and close this episode out with a poem because Doughboy91 was kind enough to donate at the $50 a month level on Patreon. So that means this episode was mid-roll free. Hopefully that saved you guys all 30 seconds of hearing about something you didn't care about. So now instead, you're going to get to hear about something I care about. Things I wrote that I didn't expect anyone to ever pay to read or listen to. Thanks, Doughboy. So let's jump right in. I call this poem, You Can't Stop the Vigil. We worried through the night that Fox would cancel us, flaring briefly like fireflies, washed out of the streets with hoses, as gases and tears bury the sky beneath choking dusts. So anyway, thank you guys so much for coming out today for my death house layout, floor plan, I don't know, say out? I don't I said a lot of things. Don't know if I said out. But anyway, thank you guys for joining me. I think this was a great start to this project, and hopefully it'll be fun when we actually get it played. I'm already learning a lot about adapting these maps. Oh my goodness. Wallpaper and double thick walls, it's going to throw everything crazy off. It's going to be nuts. We're going to have to learn so much about adapting architecture. So, anyway, until next time, y'all, this is Joe Hills from Nashville, Tennessee. Keep adventuring.